Cheers, adults! This one is just for you. And of course, if you want to share what you've learned with your kiddos tomorrow, why not? But you deserve some time out just for yourself after doing all of the chores around the house, after working, after doing all of the homeschooling, laundry, everything that's had to be done. It's now time, the kids are in bed, for you to relax and have some you time. So cheers. Go pour yourself your favorite drink. That could be a glass of Moscato like mine or a hot cup of tea. I love matcha green tea um, or any beverage you choose. Get your acrylic paints together. Get some brushes, different sizes, water cup for cleaning the brush, a napkin or two or three for drying your brush. You need something to paint on. I have just a good old canvas. You could even paint, look at this, on a scrap of a cardboard box, right? Why not, okay? So grab you a surface to paint on, get you a paper plate for mixing. If you don't have one, just wrap some foil or saran wrap around a regular plate and you can paint on top of that and then throw that Boil away later and come back and join me for a fun lesson just for you guys. Cheers. All right, now that you have your supplies, let's talk about what we're painting. Duh, we are painting a bunny rabbit today. Um, and I wanted to keep it fairly simple. My normal painting style at my studio is that I actually draw everything out for everyone that comes ahead of time. So it's almost like paint by numbers, but without the numbers, but with me. So um, instead we're having to work on a blank canvas. So it's a little outside of my element and I know it's definitely outside of your element. So we're gonna get through this together. Extra wine doesn't hurt anything, right? Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we've got our surface. I'm working vertical, so whatever it is that you're choosing to paint on, you're gonna wanna work vertical. It can even be thick paper like watercolor paper. Then if you have something to draw with, um, probably a pencil, that might be best. I am going to just sketch this out for you with a Sharpie. Now, if you have something round, such as a plate, that would make a great curved surface, right? So I am going to use my plate as guideline. Now my plate has ridges on it, so I don't wanna draw right on the lines, but like right on the edge, cause I'll wind up tracing those ridges and I don't wanna do that. So I am following right on the edge and let's see, I'm gonna bring this in just a little, but I'm not gonna go all the way down. So I left some space at the bottom, okay? So I have this great curve line. So you might find something like that. Maybe you have a big bowl, maybe you have a big plate. Although if you're using Sharpie, do not get right on your surface because you might wind up with Sharpie line on your nice dinner plate. Don't wanna do that, okay? So, time for another sip. Next step, step is to get your brushes organized. I do have a very small detail brush. I have a medium pointy brush. I have a medium flat brush, and then I just happen to have this big one around the house. If you don't have your own brushes and paints, you could order an art kit from me that would give you a canvas, brushes, play, paint plate, paints, um, napkins, Sharpie, and some guided instructions from me. So that could be an option. You can go to artsyrose.com and fill out a contact uh, sheet to order a kit from me to get your own supplies. And it comes with an Artsy Rose bag to keep it all in. So we've got our supply set. We've got our paint plate. We've got our paints. We've got our water cup for cleaning our brush. I suggest using a cup that you can just toss when we're all finished or save for the next paint project. Don't use your nice cups. My daughter's done that. There's nothing more frustrating than your kids ruining your nice things, right? <laughs> Make sure you have on something you don't care if you get paint on and have your surface covered because acrylic paint does stain permanently. 
Now, let's talk about these little ears. We know that bunny rabbits have, you could either make them curved like that one or super curved like this one, or they could come to a point. So if I start up here and I can kind of curve down, notice that I am sketching right now, okay? Then we're gonna come over here. This one is not gonna go quite as high because I am going to sketch out and back in. And then this guy is about that wide, so I'm gonna measure this guy like this and measure that one out like that, okay? And then maybe in here we have the same thing going on inside the ear, right? Okay, so now for the face, we're gonna do some cute little eyes. So we'll just do some little ovals and we'll go back and add some fun details to those. And I need to even that out just a little bit. And you can use a pencil for your sketching. You definitely don't have to use a Sharpie. I know that's a little scary, right? To use a Sharpie. Okay, so we did a curve line like a frowny face, curve, curve. Now, I do teach elementary art for a living, so if I talk to you like you're a kid, that's because that's how I teach is to kids. I've been teaching elementary art for 14 years, but I found that most of my adults do not mind me breaking it down real simple for them um, because most of them, this is just a fun little hobby and so they enjoy learning all these little simple tricks. Okay, so we've got our cute little mouth. You could even give your bunny some big old teeth if you want to. Okay, and then, you know, you've got your little freckly lines, right? And we've got some whiskers. And if you wanted to wait to do the whiskers, you could. And then down here at the bottom, if you have something round, such as maybe like a cup, I'm trying to think, is that about the size? I think that's about the size I want. You could use a cup to trace, and that would help you to be able to make two there we go, curve lines just like that. And then we can come back in here kind of add the little paw marks. So now we've got our little bunny set up ready on our canvas. This is just quick little sketch. Doesn't have to be um, anything perfect because we're gonna go back and paint. Now one thing I want you to do, Take a deep breath, relax, and just enjoy the process. Trust me, I have a whole process for everything, and when it all comes together at the end, you, my friends, are gonna love this, I promise, okay? So, next, first we're gonna work on our background. We wanna do our background first, then we'll work on our bunny a little bit, and then we'll work on all the details at the end. So I want you to think about what color do I want my background and what color do I want my bunny to be? There's really no wrong answer. Of course your bunny can be white, but you could have fun. Your bunny could be in a pastel yellow. Your bunny could be pastel pink. So think, hmm, what colors do I want to be on my canvas, right? And that's what we're gonna get put on our palette. So, sip. Now, I am gonna start with, let's start with our pointy brush. This is a great brush for just scooping out of these little tins. These little tins are what you will get um, in the mail if you order a paint kit from me. I always start out with white in the center of my plate. This is how I set up my paints for my customers. And I start with a decent amount of white, especially on this project. And the reason why is because I'm going for some pastel colors today. I'm gonna to go soft, okay? And then I may want some yellow. If it bothers you that there's white paint in your brush, clean it off, or just grab from the edge Okay, so I'm gonna get me some yellow on here. Now I really do need to clean my brush. So if you were one of my kids, I would tell you, your brush becomes a ballerina and we smush and swirl in the bottom of the cup. 
and then the boys would all be groaning at me. But for real, smush the brush on the bottom and then no topping or you will get that water everywhere. Instead, I'm gonna kind of rub that like that. Instead, wipe on the inside of your cup to get the extra water out. And then this part is super, super important. You have to dry your brush every single time you wash it. If not, the second you put the brush on the canvas, the water all rolls down, you streak the paint, and then you're frustrated, okay? And no frustrations when you paint with me. This is just a time to leave all those worries back behind you, out of your mind, and just have some you time because you deserve that. Um, I am going to get, I don't have pink paint out today, so I'm going to get some red. And I know that when I mix this with white, I will make pink, right? Because red and white makes pink. I might go ahead and grab some purple. I know red's on my brush, but that's okay. Again, if it bothers you, clean your brush and come back to it. Or you might even have squeeze bottles at home, so you can just squeeze this paint right out onto your plate. And that works too. I'm rubbing on the bottom, wiping on the side, and then dry, dry, drying. Okay, and then I definitely want some turquoise. I really love turquoise. Put me some extra. And then I think I'm going to put some blue just in case. Okay, so now I'm going to let this brush just hang out in the water cup, okay? You never want to leave a brush out with acrylic on it. Otherwise, uh, the acrylic paint will get dried up in your paintbrush and then it ruins your paintbrush, okay? So, now, if I were you, I would grab your biggest brush that you have. Now, um, I personally like a brush that has nice nylon bristles um, because, and just way better than super soft bristles. It holds the paint better, better, holds the form better, works really nice. So anytime I wanna lighten a color, I'm gonna move the white over to the color that I want to lighten, okay? So for example, if I wanted to make a soft turquoise background, I would move the white paint over to my turquoise and then just get a little bit of turquoise at a time and mix that into my white. Try to keep it into a small pile and not all over the place. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna outline the outside of the bunny. I am holding my brush just like I would hold a pencil right where the metal and the handle touch. And um, if I turn this brush a certain way, the bristles are thinner and make a thinner brush stroke, or if I turn it the other way, it'll make a thicker brush stroke. So I am just getting my bunny outlined. Sort of planning it out, right? Now as you're painting, if you see any little bitty white spots, that means that you need more paint on your brush. All right. So I am now going to make thicker brush strokes and I am just making curve, 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 just swirling my brush around, making some great texture in the background. I am not all about nice and smooth, okay? Um, also, I do like to paint my edges, so I'm gonna paint the very top and all in here just like that. So if you are able to just take some deep breaths and relax and enjoy this process, I think that you will have a great time. And one thing you need to remind yourself is that I do this for a living. Not only do I teach full time in a classroom, I do own Artsy Rose. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot of practice because I am always teaching. I am never home. So to all you working mamas out there, more power to you. And you know what? To all you stay at home mamas, more power to you too because everybody, even those dads, are getting a dose of what it's like to be home all day, every day with their kiddos. 
Luckily, um, right now, in this phase of my family's life, my son is graduated from high school and he is going to college and has about a year left. So he does his own thing and um, that's kind of hard as a mama because I worry about him being out there in this big crazy world right now. But I know that he's being safe and careful and making really good choices because we have preached that to him his whole life. Uh, be a leader, not a follower, right mamas? Okay, now I'm trying to find a safe place to grab this so I can turn it to its side. You guys might be painting flat at home and that is okay because that's actually how I paint when I'm just creating new canvases is I actually paint flat at home too. Okay, so we got all three edges and we got our background painted. Now, I know I'm probably a little ahead of you, so you can pause me at any time, rewind me at any time if you wanna <laughs> hear this voice again, and then hit play when you're ready to catch back up. All right? Now, once you have your background, oh, my background and my shirt match. I did not mean that to happen. Um, but once you have your background done, just for fun, if you want to, you could grab a little bit of another color. So I left all of this turquoise in my brush. And what I can do now is I can grab just the tiniest amount of blue, just a little bit, come on camera, focus just a little bit of blue right there on the tip, okay? And then I can swirl that on. So, let me show you up close. That's what it looks like, okay? But the more I swirl it, the more it will blend in to the canvas. Now, if you liked your background, you don't wanna do this. You just wanna leave it alone, okay? If you did not love your background or you just want to try this add a little bit of excitement it was just a little bit and then what's happening is that little bit is going a long ways now I'm talking it was like mini chocolate chip amount guys just a little bit we all know how much that is okay and then I can get me just a smidge more Put some up in that corner. And then of course, the more I go over it, the more it blends in. Now, we also, my husband and I have another child. We have a daughter that is 13. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so those of you that have teenagers understand what I mean by that. Uh, but actually, she's been doing really good during this time. It's been a little, um, a little sad, she misses her friends, but she has been keeping herself busy and she has been helping me with things. Like she actually helps me draw the canvases that get shipped out in the art kits. Um, she helps me put the paint in the tins. She helps me with the dishes. So I try to give her enough responsibility with the business and at home, but not too much responsibility. So she still feels like she is a kid, right? But there's nothing wrong with a little child labor and helping having your kids help around the house so that they take some ownership in their home, you know? Okay, so this is the turquoise now with some blue on. Let me show you up close what it looks like. Okay, so you can see, oops on this side over here, a little bit more texture, and this side over here, it's blended just a little bit more. It's up to you how much you want to leave out showing. I could even grab just a little bit of purple and kind of put it around maybe my edges. Now, I really hope that those of you that maybe are not as comfortable at painting are just trying this for fun. Why not take up a new ha a new hobby? I will say art is such a great release for me. I will also say that I used to 
despise painting, but that's because I hadn't ever been taught and nobody showed me all these tricks. I just figured them out on my own until I got to college. And then that's when I had some painting classes that taught me some of these pointers. And because I had to paint for college for the grades, um, I got a lot of practice at it and I got better at it. Now, if your paint, see this is so dry over here, it's not blending at all. So a little trick is you take your brush, barely dip it in your water cup, not your tea or your wine, your water cup, and then you rub that on top and then what that does is it loosens it back up for you so that you can blend a little, okay? So if it's not blending, into your canvas just get a little bit wet and you can loosen that up so there it is with the purple you don't have to go this far with it if you liked it the way it looked back originally with just the turquoise or whatever you chose for your background colors then just leave that and fast forward through this part right there's no wrong answer when it comes to art you are your own special artist and that may sound childish but works for adults too you are your own special artist you do this how you want to okay all right so once we have our background done we're gonna let this guy get a little bath get it all nice and clean really kind of smushing and swirling it down there and then wiping the sides because it's got what three different colors in it so I really you might even have to clean it twice don't forget you have to dry the brush the bigger the brush the more liquid it holds too so think about that okay so now I'm gonna move on to the bunny and I think just for fun I'm gonna make a pink bunny kind of reminds me of those peeps candies I don't know about you guys but I'm not a huge fan of peeps they are good to have like one. I don't know how our kids eat like a bunch of them, but that's okay. All right, so I have to move enough white over to be able to fill this whole bunny, right? And so I know I used up all my white on the plate. That's okay, I have more in my tin, I can get more. I'm gonna get just a teeny bit of red at a time. Okay, just a teeny bit of red. And then I will mix that in. Mix, 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 mix. And what I've done is I've made a really soft pink. The more red I put in there, the darker it's gonna go. Now we wanna scrape the extra paint off because you don't want too much paint on your brush right now, okay? And then what we're gonna do is turn it, uh, you guys can't see that. Okay, I'm gonna have to make mine darker so you can see what's going on. You don't have to make yours darker though. You, I'm sure, can see just fine what is going on. Okay. Scrape that extra off. Here we go. There. Now you can see. So I am going to outline and then fill it in. And I'm doing this little short quick brush strokes and you know what if I get some on the head it doesn't matter if I get some on the middle of the ear it doesn't matter if I get some on the background it doesn't matter nobody's gonna know that you got out of the lines unless you tell them you can just touch it up and fix it right no big deal Okay, there's one ear, and I meant to tell you that on your background. Do not stress about getting paint on your bunny because the awesome thing about acrylics is they cover each other up, okay? All right, so we'll get this all filled in just like that. Okay, so now I got my ears filled in. My paint is not so thick that it's globby, but it's not too thin that it will cover up my black Sharpie lines pretty good. If you still wanna see those black Sharpie lines, don't worry about it because at the end, when we are all finished, you can go back with your Sharpie and redraw all of those lines. After the paint dries, Sharpie will go right on top of um, acrylic paint it's pretty cool and I actually do that with a lot of my paintings is I I uh, repaint or I mean I re-sharpie the sharpie lines okay and say you lose your sharpie lines where you can't see them anymore you just turn the flashlight on on your phone 
you shine it behind the canvas and then the, the Sharpie line will show back through so you can trace it later. Okay. Like I said, we don't stress about painting because there's all kinds of tips and tricks. And if something happens to your painting, you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Just private message me or message me and, you know, leave a comment, ask me what to do, and I'll, I'll help you out, okay? So we don't stress about painting. This is supposed to be your no stress zone. <laughs> okay, now as I paint my bunny in, I am going to paint it in with a curved brush stroke just like this, okay? Curve, curve, curve. Now, I don't have to worry too much about the eyes because those are gonna be black, right? So I can just paint right over those. You probably can't see them up there on that screen, but I can still see them right in front of my face, so I know they're still there. Okay, paint, 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 paint. Now I am gonna grab, I had a little bit of white left, and I'm gonna put straight white right here, kind of in the center, and then blend it back forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so that it sort of softens this up right there in the middle and gives us a different value to work with, okay? I did not clean my brush out to add the white on. I just put it straight on the canvas. Now, if you do pick up your brush when you're painting, say I brush and then I pick up, you can see right, oh, keep going, right there where, well, now I made another mark, but right there where I picked my brush up. So instead, you go from edge to edge of something, edge to edge, edge to edge, just like this, so that way you don't see where your brush was picked up and put down. I am gonna grab some more white and I'm gonna put just a little bit up here at the top. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of white on the left side of the ear and a little bit of white on this left side of the ear. And the reason why I'm doing it right now and that top little bit right up here and the reason why I'm doing that is so that it makes my bunny not look quite so flat. Do you see how it has some kind of highlights in there and how the middle of the face is softer? Now, if I wanted to, I could even grab a little bit more red, make me a little bit darker pink, and I could go on the opposite side of where I put the white and put a little bit of the darker pink. Now, if you don't feel comfortable using your big brush for this, you can always switch to your medium pointy brush and use that for these little bit of darker spots that we're kind of putting in here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna grab some more white from here. I always get from the side of a container that we don't ruin the whole thing. Okay. Now again, if your paint is too dry to blend the white on top, you can get your brush just a little bit wet and then blend, or you can put some of that original color back on there, like my original pink back on there. And uh, blend some of that on and then put white on top of that. So I get it all wet again with original pink if, if you need to, okay? All right, now don't stress about this. Remember, trust my process. Do not stress about all these highlights and shadows. If you don't want them, don't put them on there. This is your painting, okay? So I'm gonna let that guy hang out in the water, clean my medium pointy brush, dry it out really good, I'm gonna get just a little bit more of that darker pink and kind of redefine that edge just a little bit. And I'm kind of going a little bit, cart well, how about a lot cartoony? <laughs> just since we were starting on a blank canvas, I wanted to keep it as 
stress-free as possible. So that's why this is a little cartoony. Plus it's fun, why not, right? All right, so now I'm gonna use the same darker pink and come in on the ears. So I outline where that Sharpie was, outline where the Sharpie was, and then fill it in. Okay, outline where the Sharpie is, outline where the Sharpie is. This one's a little different. And then fill it in, just like that. Okay, and then I could even grab a little bit of white and stick just a little bit of white right there in the middle. Why not? Okay. Perfect. Now, you got to think, which brush would I be more successful at? Would I be more successful at using this baby brush or will I be okay to use my medium pointy brush to paint the eyes? and the nose and the mouth. And if your bunny is not pink, like mine's pink, if your bunny is not pink, you could um, totally use pink to paint the nose, okay? But I kind of can't do that. So I get my little pink or my little black canister and I am going to, and I always start my circles smaller than what they really need to be because it seems like every time I try to go back, oops, see, I got all the lines, and make them look more rounded, I wind up goofing them, okay? So start a little smaller than what you really need to so that way when you go to fix your roundness, oops, then you won't wind up with like these huge eyes, right? Um, if your pink is dry, you can rest your pinky on the canvas to kind of steady your hand, okay? Um, if it's not dry, then you just gotta be really careful. Nose. mouth and then the whiskers the softer your touch the thinner your brush strokes are going to be the heavier your touch the thicker your brush strokes will be and of course if you don't want that to happen maybe use your baby brush so you don't have nice so that way you don't have thick brush strokes right and then we've got these little curved lines down here. I'm going to go ahead and trace these. Now, let's say you are dreading doing these black lines. Then why not do um, Sharpie, right? You can totally Sharpie these lines. You do not have to use the paintbrush. The paintbrush is a little scary. Those are two quick sweeps. They're not even solid. None of these lines really are very solid. They're different thicknesses. They're kind of feathered at the end and broken a little bit. There we go. Now to make those cute little dimples on the face, you actually flip your brush upside down, dip the end into the paint, dot, 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 So you can make all those little dimples whoop, with your brush handle, right? Okay. Same thing for the eyes. I could add a little shine in the eye by doing a dot with white and a dot with white. Super cute. And then I could do another little dot, dot, just like that. All right. Now, I'm going to let you guys catch up with me. And I was thinking you could either, oh, if you want to call it quits, you got to do your little black line right there and call it good. Super cute little chubby bunny, right? This would be so fun to hang on your front door, 
put up on the bookcase or the mantle, um, hang on the wall, just a fun little Easter decoration and some good unwind time for you. Or you can keep watching and we can add some flowers and make it look really springy, okay? Now, if you decided to keep watching, thank you. And this next spot, this next thing we're gonna do, you are going to really want to <sighs> take a deep breath. Maybe get up and walk around a minute. My neighbor um, always says that you will never be this close to your painting again. So what you see right now in front of your face is not how art is meant to be viewed. It's meant to be viewed from a distance, right? So um, you're never gonna be this close to your painting again. And what you're seeing right now, you will not see when it's hanging up on the wall, okay? And out on display for your family or your neighbors. So, and yes, you have to be proud of your work, okay? Um, so right now we just take a deep breath and the next step that we're gonna do is very, it's almost a little abstract, okay? It's just, just for fun. I'm a little worried about my black paint just because I painted so fast. If you have a blow dryer at home, you could always uh, blow dry this real quick, right? And then come back to it, or you can step away, go take care of something, and then come back to this. But I am gonna just hope that the black is dry enough. That's why I didn't put this black line here, because I didn't want extra black. Now, in order to do some fun springtime flowers, I am going to mix some white. Oh man. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here's my little lid for it. I'll just set it on top of the lid instead of putting it on my table. Okay, so I'm gonna move some white over here to my yellow and mix this up real good. And the reason I put white in my yellow is so that it's not gonna be so see-through. Now I'm gonna get a good chunky amount on here, okay? And I am going to make a big circle, <laughs> just like that. And I started on the outside, and I made a circle, and I didn't think hard about it, and then I went shoop, 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 in, okay? And then I think I'll put one over here. Oop, that black wasn't dry, but that's okay. That is okay, and this black is not dry either, I can tell. i am just wipe it with my finger a little. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna leave this in my brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and I'm gonna mix that red in. And we know that yellow and red makes orange, right? Grab me some white, grab me a little bit more red. Mix, 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 mix. Hopefully you guys are still getting some calm, quiet peace time. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of that in, okay? And then I'm gonna grab some of the bold, bright yellow. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Just a little swirly, oop, this way, a little swirly mess, okay? And I'm gonna grab some bright yellow and I'm gonna make a curve, 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 curve. And I'm gonna do it again. Curve, 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 curve. And the only reason I'm doing this is so that my flowers do not look so um, perfectly round. We want them to be more organic looking, more natural, so misshaped, misformed a little. Okay, then I'm going to take some straight red. I left all those other colors in my brush, and I've got, come on, straight red on there. Little tip, a little bit on the tip, and I am going to make a curve. See if I can do this closer for you. And a curve, 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 and a curve. Just like that, kind of around my edges. Now the more I go over it, the more it will blend. Okay, can you see that? All right, so like I said, it's a little bit, um, you can even do like a, just a spiral if you want, and then curve the edges. So that's pretty too, okay? Um, so it's a little abstract. It doesn't quite look like a flower, but that is okay. I think that's fun. Now I could keep messing with this and messing with it, or you can just let it be. 
Um, you can even put just like a little bit of white on there if, if it's a little too see-through for you. And if the black is dragging into your color, like it's on my brush, so I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my napkin. If your black is dragging through your color and you don't like that, if that's bothering you, then just wipe your brush off real good and let your canvas dry for a little bit longer, okay? All right. There, so now we're gonna pick another color to do. So I might do, um, how about some purple? How about some white and purple mixed together? Now you have to be careful if your purple gets close to your yellow because it could potentially make um, like a brown color, okay? So same thing, we're gonna start with a circle. Oh, I need more purple in there so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay. And some purple. There we go. And then some purple, a little bit smaller, maybe a little one over here, okay. Now, I am going to get some straight purple on my brush, but because I have light purple mixed in, um, it's not gonna look like straight purple, okay? And so I did a spiral in the middle, start in the center, spiral out. Now, these might be really, really frustrating if you are trying to make them perfect. So what, remember, you just have to, Take a deep breath, maybe get up, walk around, have a little sippy sip, okay? Okay, so I am working my way around that flower and I am going to spiral some straight purple. I'm trying to anyway, it's just really blending with that light, isn't it? Okay, there, just like that. Is that pretty? Yes, okay. I'm gonna clean all that purple out of my brush. And I think for the second color on my purple flowers, make sure you dry your brush, is I think I'm gonna do some blue. We haven't even, I don't think I even dipped into my blue yet. So I'll spiral in some blue, blue. Like I said, you really have to be careful with that yellow and the purple being so close together because it will go, um, like a brownish, or now me putting some blue on there, it could even go greenish. So you gotta really be careful putting that yellow and purple right next to each other, okay? Again, you got all the time in the world right now, right? Sadly, we have all the time in the world right now. So let it dry, walk away, come back to it in a minute, or blow dry, you know, whatever you need to do. I think I'm gonna make my orange darker Remember I made like this orangey color up here. Draw my brush really good. So I'm gonna get some more red. Mix that in to that orangey color that I had. Ooh, a little bit more yellow. Ooh, a little bit more yellow, come on. There it's going. Got a little tiny bit of white left. Mix that in. Okay. And I might do just some little orangey spots in here. And this is just adding just a little extra something in my flowers, okay? And if you get the blue on it, then you might need to wipe your brush off on your napkin. Okay, cutie cute. Clean my brush. Now on these little guys, I might wanna switch to my baby brush. Get me just a little bit of white and kind of swirl that in. A little spiral. Little spiral, little spiral, little spiral, and another little spiral, and another little spiral. There. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. I haven't shown you in a while. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my pointy brush. I'm gonna get me, let's do, um, Let's take some turquoise and let's take some of this yellow or if you already have green, just use that. Kind of make your own green. I'm gonna 
get some white, mix some white in there. So you start with um, whatever your lighter color is, start with that first. Okay, so lots of yellow, a little bit of turquoise at a time, and then I put a big old chunk of white in there. So now I can make some like leaf looking things. Um, there we go. So it's just a curve line, curve line together. So it's like a frowny face curve, smiley face curve. There we go. Maybe put one over here, put one over here. Okay, and maybe I need one here. All right, then I'm gonna darken this up by adding a little bit more turquoise to it, okay? So I added more turquoise to make it a little bit darker. I'm gonna get that baby brush back out. Anytime you're trying to keep some real small details, you wanna grab that baby brush, okay? And then I can do like a center. I can even outline it. Outline, outline, center, come on. Outline, outline, center. And the trick to putting wet paint on top of wet paint is barely touching your brush to the canvas. I'm holding my brush a little further back than what I had been doing because I want my brush strokes to be real quick, okay? Um, and not perfect. If I hold my paintbrush way down here on the metal part, it might look a little too perfect. We don't want that. I might even do like some little wispies little wispies around here, little wispies. Here we go. Oh my gosh, how fun is she? And I cannot believe this just came from a blank canvas. Those of you that know me know that's not really my style. I love to have things drawn out for you guys. It just makes life a little bit more comfortable, but this is awesome. I'm so proud of this. You should be so proud of you. I'm gonna grab some of that purple again. And what I did was I flipped my baby brush handle upside down and just do like some little dots. So I hope that you guys are pausing me whenever you need to, because I know that I paint kind of fast. Y'all gotta remember I've been doing this a long, long time. So you just pause me whenever you need to. There we go, just like that. Pause, 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 if you need to. And then play some more. Okay, my kids at school tell me all the time, Miss Scott, you are the art teacher for a reason. Please don't sing. <laughs> well, the little ones don't tell me that. They all think, you know, all of us adults are amazing. It's the older ones that tell me. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the little polka dots. Oh, there, flip it. There we go, oh my gosh. Okay, so next thing, there's just a couple of little extras that I wanna add, okay? So um, I wanna put a little bit of white on her whiskers just to soften them up some. Break up the face a little, okay? Little white, now that it's dry, it works. A little white highlight on the nose. Um, you can even, I know we tried to do this earlier, but now that it's dry, you can really get some little highlights on there to show. And then on the eyes, I'm gonna clean my brush off. And you may wanna use Sharp, actually, you know what, I'm just gonna do it, I'm gonna use Sharpie. And you guys can add some little eyelashes. Since we definitely made her a girly girl, right? So see, I've got some eyelashes on there and I softened her little whiskers and added some highlights. Um, and if her eyelashes aren't thick enough, you just go over them a couple of times with a Sharpie, right? Or you can like totally be crazy and go over them with the paintbrush, okay? Okay. Now, I feel like she's super cute and total cheers to you guys. 
Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for spending some quiet you time with me. I plan on doing more of these activities for you guys. So stock up on surfaces to paint on and some paint and brushes. And like I said, you can reach out and contact me and I can send some stuff your way. Um, so I had a great time. Remember, you're your own special artist and your outcome does not have to be anything like mine. Please post some pictures, like this page, um, share with your friends, all of that good stuff. I had a great time and you guys have a wonderful, restful rest of the evening and a great week. Thanks, guys.